by my estimate, I'd say I'm looking at three to four hours in order to be able to vote. They had to rent this private venue here, this hotel, because they couldn't use a public venue. And as you can see, it's clearly inadequate for the amount of people that have turned out because I think I'm halfway and I've been here an hour and a half and I don't even know what the line's like once I get into the hotel. When I first got here, I saw three friends in line, um, said hi and kept going to the back of the line um, and made more friends in the line, so. Wait a second, you saw three friends that were further up in line and you didn't cut? <laughs> nope, I didn't. I actually had a friend who's a volunteer take me ahead as well, um, but I came back and Line, so. Wow, so fairness is an important value to you. It is. I mean, it was kind of funny. I wish I could have been taking videos of people's faces as they just watched the line or approached and kept going and walking around block after block to try to find the end of it. T looking at their watch, like, oh my goodness, I've been walking for seven minutes, haven't even gotten to the end of the line, um, and it had turned away. What did you do when you had to go to the bathroom where you, you, you got hungry? Oh, I had to hold it. But I brought snacks. I I I was warned. Friends warned me to come wear comfy shoes and bring snacks. I know people have looked at the line and said, I want to go home. I don't want to wait in this line. Now, if you wanted to vote and it's meaningful to you, hopefully you'll pay the cost and, and exercise your right. This has been uh, a more difficult than usual voting experience because it's not being run by the D.C. Board of Elections. The D.C. Republican Party has been a little bit a victim of the rules of the National Republican Party, which forced a primary that is usually held in June backwards um, and called for resources to organize that a small party like the D.C. Republican Party doesn't have. I think the city would take the view that D.C. primaries are historically in June, and if your national party organization forces your party to go backwards in time because of its own rules, uh, why should the D.C. PAC taxpayer have to adjust? Um, and D.C. City City Council, of course, overwhelmingly dominated by Democrats, is probably not in a mood uh, to change its rules to be accommodating of the Republican minority. Do you think they were aware that this might happen? I, I have no idea, and I don't want to impute anything. Uh, my guess is it would be indifference uh, rather than malice, but I don't know. You know, I've documented really long lines of the polls in states like Virginia, Florida, and North Carolina, where you saw the legislative uh, fingerprints on it, where by you know cutting back on early voting, it was some might even accuse them of doing it on purpose. I think it reflects how these things happen. If a state has a strong bias to one party, it's going to organize affairs in the interest of that party. Uh, the reason I, I mean, the D.C. Democrats don't gain anything by capping the number of votes. It's not going to change the outcome. This is, I, I don't think there are a lot of Trump voters in the District of Columbia. I, I read your piece about saying that Trump might be right on the immigration issue, at least for the Republican electorate. Are you saying that you feel that he's right in terms of policy? What Trump did is took a lot of issues that Republicans have dismissed and he elevated them. Not just immigration, but um, what's happening to middle-income Americans. Um, so that, that message was powerful. That's a very different thing from what he's doing with that message and who he is. I've written very clearly about what I think is the appropriate future of the Republican Party. And Trump's identified some powerful themes, but the party also needs to be modern, inclusive, and able to govern effectively. Do you think that maybe the party could still win with the percentage of people who are still white and conservative left in the country? Uh, let me put it this way. Um, I don't think you win by lining up beads of subgroups. You win by having a message that appeals to everyone. And no party um, is ever going to win 100% of the vote or even 65% of the vote. But when you play the game, you should play as if you were fighting for every one of 100% of the votes. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thanks.